See, I was going to give you a preemptive star, uh -huh. so I didn't actually have to evaluate anything. Gag or not, I'm taking this star. Okay, there you go. I said the most important part of a studio is lighting. Probably. I don't know why we invited him. Personality is probably the most important part of the studio, I would say. Then we definitely shouldn't have invited hey yo. him. Well, Mark, you have a lot more things on the table than you did a minute ago. Yes, yes I do. Because as we've established in this video, the most important part of your studio is lighting. And that brings us to today's sponsor. Godox has sponsored this video with the Lightman's Lights. These things, fantastic. Now, here's the thing. They contacted me about the sponsorship. You know what they says to me? You know what they says, Gerald? They says, you know Gerald Lundon, right? I said, yes, I do. And they said, perhaps you could get him to come over and he could explain the lights to you and help you set them up. Explain them. Oh, to me. so I was like a value add to the sponsor. Okay. Apparently, Godox doesn't think that I can handle the explanation of a light. That being said, Gerald, please explain these lights to did, me. Did you get paid more money for having me on? Yeah, okay. I did. Didn't you used to use Godox lights before this? I did, Gerald. And you know why I used Godox lights before this? I think you do. That's why you're asking me this question. Is it because you watched one of my videos? I watched one of your videos. Okay. He was praising the VL150 a few years ago. That's true, yeah. So I got that from my old studio. It's still up there. And I liked it so much, I got their silent lights, the UL150 and the UL60. So this is a wonderful sponsorship. I've been a Godox user for many years, and it's thanks to this boob right here. Okay. I see how it is. All right. So what do you want from me? You want me to test your lights? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. You got, you know, you got all your Star Trek type of stuff. I brought know? it, yeah. You're, you're all kind of, you're, you, apparently, according to Godox, you know everything, and I don't. So <laughs> so uh, what do we have here? We have a 150R. This is a full RGB light. And then we also have this one here. This was up. By the way, and this has nothing to do with me trying to suck up to the sponsor. I switched my regular lighting to these lights a couple of weeks ago, and I've gotten many a compliment on my videos. They say, uh, your videos are looking better these days. Did you get a new camera and lens? And I didn't. I just fixed my lighting. So, go, Docs. Maybe I know a thing or two. Have you thought about that? So, I haven't used this light before. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to tell you how to make the video, but it might be fun if you let me just kind of poke around and see if the menu is intuitive and if uh, if it's got everything I would want it to have. All right. And uh, if it doesn't, then I guess I have to reshoot the video. That's because right. Because the sponsor will be super mad at me. If all of a sudden I'm not in the video anymore, it's because <laughs> Mark was not happy with the things I was saying. That's right. Okay, so first impressions. I'm going to turn this guy on. First of all, I noticed we have a XLR style power connector, mm -hmm. 48 volt in. Mm -hmm. It has a locking plug, by the way. It does. Does it come with any kind of like battery operation down here? Is it mains only? It's mains only okay. in this unit I was sent. Okay. So let's flick it on. Nice robust switch. Did you hear that? I do like that switch, yeah. Starting. Pretty quick boot up time. And the interface is simple. And okay, so see right here, GM. Mm -hmm. So let's let's blast this up to 100%. That way we, if, we, if we got a fan, we get the fan going too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why I like full color lights even if I'm not using the color at a given moment, is that we have the green magenta adjustment. So we can crank it up like that. And that seems really granular, which I like as well. Let me go down again. I'm looking at the light over there. Yeah, it's good. So we can test this after, but usually when you first buy a light, it might come in a little bit magenta right out the gate. And so having the ability to put a little bit more green, a little bit more magenta on there, if you care about color, making it as perfect as you want, you can really dial it in. And then you can compensate as the light ages. You know, as it as it gets older and starts to change, you have the ability to compensate. And I like how granular it is where, like, you know, we have up to 100% in the one direction and minus 100% in the other direction. So we'll, we'll bust the spectrometer out, but I'm guessing you're going to be able to dial it into perfectly neutral green magenta shift. So I'll be able to grow old with this light. And I feel some air movement. Maybe a little bit. Is there a fan? Yeah, there's a fan, and it works very well. But uh, I'll let you discover the fan through the buttons. So right now, it just seems passive. So mm -hmm. let's go into the menu, fan. Right now it's an auto. So off, is that going to limit our output? It did. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's a silent mode. That's right. That's nice. I don't know if it's like a 10% output. We can we can test that. But I like I like having a silent mode. What is it? It's 10%. Is it 10%? Unless I'm pretending I don't know. Let's go into the menu and see... Uh, okay, so do we have to go mode? Okay, so okay, mm. that's a fun way to do it. Yeah, I've seen other lights where you can still go to 100%, but now your new 100% is only 10% of what it once was. 
I think I like this better. Just say 10%, that's what you're running at. Yes. And so you know that this 10 is probably going to be the same as 10 with the fan on high, right? Right. So that's good. And I like having a silent mode because why not, right? Now let's take it off and we'll let it go full full speed ahead on high. Obviously auto is, I assume, only going to kick on when it needs it and at mm -hmm. the speed that it needs it. But let's see what it is when it's super noisy. I mean, they're getting the full, yeah, like right under, right, right, right under the microphone. That's not bad at all. A big thing about fan noise is the frequency as well. Not just like, does it make noise, but is it like, like that yes. kind of thing? This feels like you can just put it out there behind a softbox and it's just going to be kind of a chill, you know, it's a chill frequency. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you saw all the sound panels I have here. I'm a nut for like noise and I have been loving these lights. And when I put it back to auto, it actually cooled off a little bit, even though I was at 100%. So, and by cool off, I should say the fan relaxed a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Bluetooth, we talked about you have an app, display. There's a medium mode as well on the fan that yeah. lets you go to a certain percentage. He needs a medium mode. Uh, okay, well, I mean, you know, is there, is there effects? Let's go mode, mode. CCT, HSI, you still shooting this? I think so. Okay. Yep. CCD, HSI, RGBW. Okay, that's interesting. So they have both HSI and an RGB mode. So with HSI, obviously, you choose your you choose your hue on a wheel where, like, 360 will be red or something like that. 290-ish is normally a purple. Nice. Yeah. Well, nice little purple hue. See that over there. Uh, but then we also have RGBW mode, which allows you to dial in the different RGB modes and then also how much white you're getting. So it lets you know that it's an RGBW chip. And then you can choose a gel. That's fun. They've got some pre preset gels in there. So you can choose between Roscoe or Lee filters. And then the different like gels that you would buy at the store. That's cool. I like that. And then effects. Flashing light warning, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll just tell what we have. Lightning. Cloudy, broken bulb, that's like faulty bulb, TV, candle, fire, fireworks, explosion, mm. welding, cop car, SOS, RGB cycle, and party mode. Oh, party mode. Huh? So unless I'm not understanding it right, it does not seem like the speed affects party mode. Party mode is party mode just does its own thing. <laughs> uh anyway, super intuitive. Yeah. So now Gerald is gonna play with the app to see if it's also intuitive. So I'm gonna tap on 150R. Okay, brings up the controls. Let me Increased intensity, yeah. Nice easy sliders. Are you doing a screen recording of this? Like they can see yeah, me. Yeah, I'm they recording can see me the phone. Yeah. Green magenta, and we didn't talk about the CCT range. It seems like it can go all the way. Oh, 1800 Kelvin. That is extreme. Yeah. To 10,000. So it's obviously that would be something that you likely, if I had to guess, the RGB version would have a a wider you, color spread yeah. than the than the bi color would. You are correct. Uh, and they've got some presets here. 3200. 5600 HSI, color wheel, oh yeah, there she blows, it's really responsive. Honestly, like I said, we're at a point where thankfully there's a bit of a universal language it seems like with with light apps these days where a user like me who hasn't used this one could pick it up and have a pretty good sense of, like I, I would feel comfortable using that immediately within like 30 seconds, you know. By the way, this has been at 100% now for a little while with it on auto. And it's quite quiet. It's still very yeah. quiet, yeah. Uh, Gerald, we are not done. As oh, you goodness. can see from the blinding light that you're shining, uh, Godox sent over an ML100 by light. This is 100 watts, this little fella right here. Also connects to the app. Why don't you go ahead and do your uh, nerd talk? Well, what I notice is that there's a... I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't... I notice right here there's a this DC barrel connection that you plugged in, mm -hmm. but there's also USB-C power delivery. So I'm assuming you could do 100 watt USB-C power delivery to it and just run this thing off of a USB power brick if you yeah. wanted to, you know, so that's kind of cool. And then it has uh, CCT bicolor light as well. Yeah, it looks like it's just a bicolor light, this one, right? Because yeah. it's just Kelvin and then intensity. And then the modes, you've got effects, and that's it. So basically bicolor effects and bicolor light. Mm -hmm. But I think it's Less about the functionality and more about the fact that you've got a little 100 watt puck here yeah. that you can run off of USB C, and there's a couple fans mm -hmm. behind here. These ones might be a little bit more irritating because they're smaller fans, yeah. but uh, but it is still really cool portable light. And then it comes, this is peculiar, it's got like its own little miniature Fresnel 
for it. It's not really a hyper reflector. No, there's, yeah. a, there's a lens. There's certainly a lens in there. On a miniature little Bowen style thing. So that increases the output, one would assume. Massively, I would yeah. I would presume, yeah. We can probably shine or point the camera at that light over there. And then we attach the Oh. Oh yeah, look at that. Jump it's us. it's really spotty too. You can see the beam angle is yeah, now yeah. like super I try to do it with my hands, but on the camera. It's like super narrow now. It's all the way over here instead of broadly. Yeah, so you could get like a really strong beam of light light up a whole place. A light like this. You could actually have it probably tucked in way up there in the corner, and it could cast a little hard light with the Fresnel, and uh, it would, the footprint would be really tiny on this thing. Yeah, you, know then you want that's a good point. Versus using a big COB and putting a Fresnel lens on that, it'd be massive. And obviously, you're going to be limited, but in a small space like this, this will be quite a handy way to get a Fresnel style mm -hmm. hard light. Yeah. Now this is not a standard uh, Bowens mount. It's a small one, obviously. It works with Godox. Accessories okay. that fit this are thing. these standard bones? These mount? are standard okay. bones, about the big ones, the 300 and the uh, 150. Cool, yeah. One thing I also uh, if I can cut back to this light that I noticed that I like, mm. uh, I should probably not blind, blind the audience there is uh, there is an umbrella receptacle. Oh, yes, on the, on the mount here, which I always appreciate because sometimes you're either in a quick situation or you don't have a modifier that's going to work for that spot. It's nice to be able to at least have the receptacle. You can stick an umbrella in there. I think a light behind an umbrella actually looks quite nice mm -hmm. for the price, considering you can get umbrellas for like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks on Amazon. Yep. They look really good for the price. And so I like to see that. And the yoke itself is this is a plastic light. It's important to keep that in mind. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about the pricing, but I assume is this like their budget line or? Uh, yeah, that is is their budget line. I'm not saying that it's oh, cheap or whatever, but I'm saying that it's it's a plastic light. So just keep that in mind that the yoke here is good and it's strong, but it's as strong as it's going to get for a plastic light. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. But I do like how you can adjust it. There's a little. Are you are you seeing this in that angle? There's a little push button here that you can push in to adjust the position to make it easier to like get appropriate amount of te uh, like leverage on it. Mm -hmm. But it's it's quite strong feeling. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it is plastic. This is plastic all the way down through here. Actually, this is not. Where, no, this where part's it counts not, yeah. is metal. Yeah. This is metal. It's all painted white, but this is metal. Yeah. So, it's one of the more robust plastic lights I've seen. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's 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 still quite strong. And the finish is nice on it. And it's also, a nice looking light. It I'm, seems well built. Is is what I would say. I'm looking around at it now, and it and it seems it seems well built. Mm -hmm. So. Should we measure it? Yeah. I figured that's why you brought me here. It's like a bust out, what'd you call it? My Star Trek? Star Trek spectrometer. Spectrometer. I got my spectrometer. He's got his Vulcan death grip over here. So I do have the Sekonic C800 spect Spectromaster, and I have the spec sheet for the light, so we can sort of validate that all I really care about, I when it comes to lights, I don't care that much of like, oh, it's getting this or that. I care... Is it doing what it's supposed to do? Yeah. That's all I really care about. You know? Before we plug this in over there, people often like to know how long to the floor the brick is. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? For the dirty so, danglers. Hey, that's what I say on my videos. Yeah. So make sure you don't have a dirty dangler. I watch this video. Any lights in. So this is touching the floor here. How tall is your ceiling? Well, I do have a tape measure. Pull it taut, Mark. Pull it taut. Give me some tape measure back. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Got a wrapped around the stool. Nine foot six. Can we convert that into metric for your audience? Why do I invite you over? 2.9. Okay. So I think that that's reasonably long enough. Now see, Mark, this is moody. This is a moody shot right here. You want a contrast ratio? There you go. Gerald Dunn and Mark Bennett solve crimes. <laughs> yeah, at 100%. Oh, goodness. All right, so 5664 Kelvin. That's really close to 5600. So that's good. Uh, as you can see, though, the light requires 1.1 green. Like I said, lights start needing mm -hmm. a green adjustment, and then over time they green up. So the cool thing with that is we can actually dial that in, and we'll test it in a minute to see. And then Lux 5190. What were we supposed to get? 5290. We're really close. Here's the thing: uses as like a grain of salt because if I were to move a centimeter closer, farther away, it's yep. going to change by a couple hundred lux. So as long as we're getting within like 100 lux, we know that we're getting what we're supposed to be advertised. And uh, also we have a 94.3 CRI. An SSI daylight of 67. That might be my only criticism of the photometrics. CRI 95, we got 94.3, TLCI of 94. Now, sometimes 
there's some things in the environment that could be sort of corrupting the color. So why don't we do two things? Let's put on the hyper reflector. All right, here we go. Okay, so again, really, really good CCT. We're getting 5683, which is really close to 5600. 49,000 lux. I mm. think it was supposed to be 50, 52, 52. Maybe it's slightly under. Come on, uh, guys. And then uh, CRI is 95.2, <laughs> so that's good. And not as bad with the green magenta. But what's interesting now, so let's do one more where we take it off and we do, we actually do a green magenta adjustment. Mm -hmm. So we can take off the hyper reflector, put it at like, if I had to guess, I don't know, 10% on the GM and we'll see how much that does. There we go. Pretty close. So previously it was at 1.1 green needed. Now yep. it's at 0 0.2. So if you put 10%, it seems like that's about a stop. Like So if you, you know, if you needed two stops, it'd be 20%, give or take. Yeah. Now doing that also improved the color quality a little bit. We went up to 95.1 CRI and 68 SSI. Now, my only criticism of the photometrics purely on that, we're just looking at numbers here. So mm -hmm. is that an SSI daylight of 68 is a little bit below... It's hard to say because this price point. It's a little bit below premium competition. I see. Does that make sense? Yep, makes sense. I, you often get a seventy-two, something like that. Mm -hmm. These are just numbers. So what does it all mean? I don't know if they. I don't know if they advertise an SSI. So it's not like we could say. No, they don't. We're we're hitting the photometrics that they're advertising, but the SSI daylight, which is sort of like, how close does it match the quality of the sun in mm -hmm. terms of color quality? Yep. is a little bit, uh, a tiny bit off. All right, if we wanted to do a tungsten one, let's do a test. 3,200, one meter. The lux should be a little bit higher, it says. Uh, about four or 500 lux higher. And we got 5,490. I think we were getting like 5,000 before. So yeah, it, you get a small bump at 3,200 Kelvin. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it still needs a little bit of green adjustment. This time, half a stop. Okay. Uh, but we have the ability to do that. And the color, or the CCT is coming at 3,300. We put it to 3,200. Mm -hmm. So again, we're still within 100 Kelvin all the time, which is pretty good. Again, though, SSI, slightly lower. So this one is, is it how close does it match a true tungsten source? Normally, I would say premium competition will get you 84 or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's normally like you get like a mid to low 80s for tungsten and a low 70s for daylight. Mm -hmm. This one's batting a few points below in both categories. So that seems to be maybe the only compromise of the light that I can see so far, if anything, yeah. is that it's replication of known sources isn't as high as some premium competition. Well, what would you say about me looking golden, like a golden god? <laughs> well, I mean that. I mean, looks, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> looks great. <laughs> There's my Star Trek uh, numbers for you, okay? Yeah, good job, Spock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might shoot myself in the foot here, but how about I just tell you what I think it should be worth, mm -hmm. and then you tell me. Okay. Look, I think this is a light that you would spend three ninety nine on. Okay. Uh, maybe four forty nine. Four forty nine. Okay. So the three hundred is four eighty nine. Oh, I was talking. Oh, I was talking about the one fifty. Oh, the one fifty. Because I I assume three hundred would be like I don't know five hundred bucks or something like that. Five six hundred bucks. Yeah, it's four eighty nine. Three hundred full RGB. That's the other thing you got to factor in. It's mm -hmm. it's a well it's a well made full RGB light. Yeah, uh, I don't need more than this in this studio. Okay. Well, thanks, Gerald, for explaining everything to me. This guy's filming videos like Quentin Tarantino over here. We shot the intro, and then we immediately shot the outro. I don't even know what we explained yet. Yeah, his, I know what we explained. Okay. It's all up here. <laughs> huh? Like Quentin Tarantino. That's He's right. right. That's exactly what this channel is like. So big thanks to Gerald Dunn for coming in, helping me out. Big thanks to uh, Godox. They were the sponsor of this video. Okay. You're about to find that out. Yeah. In the non-linear filmmaking yeah. style of... Yeah. Uh, Mark's camera crisis. <laughs> it's the magic of the crisis center. That's what I call this place. Don't okay. You? The crisis center. <laughs> Maybe one of those big red rotary phones. That's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> call Batman. So uh, once again, thanks to Gerald. Thanks to Godox. And uh, let me know down below if this was helpful. And if you have any questions, then I will shoot them over to Gerald so that he can answer them. That's right. Okay. Perfect. It is perfect. Goodbye. <laughs>